I'm not Matt Kingston. I'm Max. No. No. No, you're not Max. No, I don't want you to be Max. I know why you're saying all this. You, you want to do anything to become Max, but it's not possible. You see, please don't even try, not even in a joke. Okay, look at me, look at me. Now, come on, you know me. I'm the only man you have ever really loved. I'm Max. No, this is a lie. This is a lie. No, listen. You don't need to fight anymore, okay? You stop lying to me. You're not Max, okay? Max Holden is dead. Charlotte, may I have a word with you? Later, Johnny. Now. Excuse us a moment. I told you to keep your claws away from Whitey. And I told you this was business. Daddy's business. Maybe Marco was wrong. I swear, Bo, you must be wrong. Yeah, what if he wasn't wrong? What if Sarah, Cord, Megan, they all decided to come here early, huh? Don't even think it. I told Cord I was going away on a decorating job. How am I going to explain being here on an island with Johnny D and his friends? Uh, that man never lets me out of his sight. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I know the feeling. Another hors d'oeuvre, Mr. Whitehead? Whitey. What? Uh, he's asking you if you want an hors d'oeuvre. Oh. You probably uh, call them cocktail snacks down in Texas. Yeah, yeah, we do. No, thank you. Tina, I've had it with all this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean? We're going to have a memorable stay here, even if it's the last thing we do. Is this some sort of warning? We're all of us in a lot of trouble here. A lot of trouble. Marco, what are you talking about? Just because we came here a couple days ago? I can't early? believe you let that boat go. Why are you so upset? What are you it. doing here? No, Marco, Cord? what I hear, all right, please. This is ridiculous. Come on. I'm going to find Bo. Now, wait a second. Will you just let me think for a second here, all right? Either we're all of us going to die very, very quickly, or we're all going to die very slowly. Here's what to do when you don't find the rainbows in this time. Here's where you go when it looks like the rain won't end. Don't cry. made a little miscalculation. He thought the island was deserted, but in fact, it's loaded with mobsters. Oh, is this some kind of joke? Honey, there's wise guys all over the island. I know, because I set this meeting up. Oh. Well, not this meeting, exactly. I mean, the, the meeting... Okay, Marco, 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 please with... stop babbling and just tell me what is going on with Bo. Bo walked into a high-level conference of top mobsters from all over the country. God, the only reason that he's still alive is because I pretended that he was whitey Whitehead, you see, it's a long story. Oh, what William. happened was, who? Uh, there's a gangster. I've heard that name before. It's uh, Frank Whitehead. He's one of the big syndicate bosses. Exactly. You pretended Bo was a criminal? Well, that's why he's still alive. That's why he's still drawing breath, because he played along with the idea. Oh, this man is obviously hysterical. Let's just go. Hey, will you hold on a second? I'm trying to explain something to you here. You're in a lot of danger. Now, now just you wait a second here. How did you get involved with these mobsters? Are you one of them? Honey, I, I'm just an arranger. I just set up the meeting. That's what I started to explain to you before. That's what I do Maybe for a living. Maybe next time you ought to stick to arranging flowers, huh? What I'm trying to explain to you all is we got a big problem here. I have to figure out a way to sneak you all past a mobster by the name of Johnny D. Wait, wait a minute. Johnny D, he's one guy, right? You got four of us. You got you, me, Bo, and Lucky. Oh, I'm sure we can take this guy on. The island's loaded with automatic weapons. There's no contest. Uh, this was not in my contract. I'm leaving. Oh, what are you going to do, swim? Oh, I don't suggest that. With all the makeup you have on your face, you'd sink like a stone. Okay. <laughs> That's it. I can put up with a lot. I can put up with lousy conditions, even gangsters. But I will not tolerate Lord, your you abuse. Shut up, woman. What did you say to me? Shut, shut up! up! Gordon, what were you trying to say? No, I was just thinking about something that, that Megan had said. 
Look, uh, we brought all kinds of costumes along with us, didn't we? Sure, they're in the trunks out on the dock. Why? Well, I think I got an idea. One that may help us get out of here alive. Bo, what do you have in mind? I can't take any more surprises. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to hang out here with Johnny and the rest of these goons. I'm just going to keep them busy. What about me? You're going out to the dock. You're getting in the boat with Sarah and everybody else, and you're getting off the island. Are you nuts? Not you just hold it down. Bo, I cannot go down to that dock. I will see Cord. Cord will be mad at me. Look, would you get this through your head? You're in danger. Sarah's in danger. Everybody. All of us. We're all in danger. Bo, this is all Marco's fault. He has you convinced that Johnny and his friends are bad guys. Now look at him. Look at him. There's not one black cat in the whole bunch. Whitey sure moves fast, doesn't he? So much for your ability to distract him. Oh, I just haven't turned on the heat yet. But when I do, I intend to find out if and when Whitey plans to move in on Daddy's territory. A waste of your time, sis. I'm looking after Dad's interests. Whitey Whitehead doesn't stand a chance. OK, you were right the first time. Just, just... Go up to Johnny and tell him that you're not some guy named Whitey Whitehead. You're Bo Buchanan's TV producer. God, I wish it was a way to jumpstart your brain. I am using my brain, unlike you and Marco. I know if you just go up to Johnny and you just explain this misunderstanding, he's going to have a good laugh and he's going to send everybody home. Are you through? Hmm? Yes, I'm through. Good. I want you to take a look around here. Do you see all these guys? These are all gangsters, Tina. They're all pros. They wouldn't think twice about killing any of us. Bo, well, Johnny is not a gangster, and neither are his associates, OK? They're all executives. I'm telling Dude, you, they're just, you just... You're wasting a lot of time here right now. Bo, if you would just listen to me. Oh, just listen shut to me. up! You're just full of surprises, aren't you, Whitey? I didn't know that you and Tina knew each other. I'm not Matt Kingston. I'm Max. A different face, a, a different voice, but I'm the same man you've always loved. No. Yes. No, no, I saw the coffin. I was at the grave. No, no. No, no I don't blame you for, for resisting me. Okay. I should have told you everything from the very beginning, but I couldn't. Okay? I couldn't. Oh, my God. I've known some really cruel men, but you, you are vindictive. <laughs> You'll do or say anything to get me to love you the way I love Max, but it can't be done. My God, you ought to get down on your knees and thank me for not loving you the way I loved him. It was my love for him that killed him. No, it's your love. It's our love that brought us back here to this room. Don't you understand? We, the place we were, we were married. We we're going to get married. No, my God, listen to this. This is outrageous. No, 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 this is madness. No, 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 wait, wait. No, just let me prove to you that I'm Max Holden. If you don't believe me, you can let me go, OK? do you have for me? Okay. You, you, you're standing here, in this room, while Max was... while I went out to get our, our rings and, and the marriage license. Everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah. What they don't know is that on my way back here, I picked up a hitchhiker. And when the car burned up, it was his body that was trapped inside. It was his body that was found and was mistaken for mine. I suppose you just walked away from it. No. No. A doctor and a nurse found me. They saved my life. They brought me back to their clinic. And my face was... My face was burned, it was severely burned when the car exploded. But I saw myself, and what was left of me, I couldn't go back to you. No, that, that's not true. I, I went back once. I came to you when you were sleeping. You, you, you woke up, and you stared at me and screamed in horror. So I ran away. I remember a dream, and I remember that wasn't you. No, no, no. It wasn't a dream. 
believe me, it was me. And I couldn't be a father, I couldn't be a husband. I was a shell. I was this freak! This freak show! And, and I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life in the shadows. And I, I, I couldn't ask you and Al to share that kind of life with me, okay? We loved Max. We would have done anything to help him, no matter what he looked like. You couldn't... You couldn't help me. Not even with love. And the doctor wanted to... to operate. He... he, he tried this... 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 this new procedure from Europe. But it failed once. Then he tried again, thank God. And he gave me this... this new face. You see, okay, and this new voice. And he gave me a new chance at living, okay? And I was ready to come back and tell you everything. Well, if all this is true, why didn't you? Because you turned to, to Roberts, okay? Cord Roberts. Try to forget everything you felt for me, the passion we had together. No. Father Tony. Father Tony put you up to this. He knows all this information, doesn't he? No, 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 no. This is all my doing, okay? Now, I knew we were gonna have this special bond, this unspoken bond, no matter what name I had. But I needed time to prove to you that you could love again. It doesn't matter what you say or what you do. You'll never convince me. You know, Max. Now I kissed you the last time I was in this room. And please don't tell me you don't remember. This is where we were just before I went out to get the marriage license and the wedding rings. And then I I gave you a gold coin. And I told you it was a good luck charm and I placed it in your hand. I told you to rub it. And all your doubts, doubts would disappear. And nothing but good things would come for both of us. You remembered. I live for this moment. Don't remember. <laughs> In this room, as if nothing has ever happened. I'm back. I'm finally back. I really am. So, did you just do all this yourself here? Well, there's a lot that you don't know about yeah, me. Yeah, I guess so. You didn't wait for us to eat, did you? Let's eat. Let's eat. Yeah, come here, baby. Uh, Stephen. I am even taking off my beef up to this occasion. Great. My. That's how special this is. And, uh, Nelly, would you do the honors? Yeah, Sir. what else can I do? Huh? Uh, well, you can pass me the salad. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's really good, Dave. Oh, true. How you doing, honey? Oh, I'm sorry. It's, oh, it's no problem. It's no problem. Come here, honey. It's just a minor problem. Oh, I'm sorry. No, hey, it's okay. It's okay. I'll just call in and, and tell them that uh, yeah. the phone may have called. Okay. Oh, Stephen. <laughs> what is salad. it? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Wolek. I'll have to try to pick up after Stephen. Hey, Nellie, it's, it's all right. It's okay. Do you want to eat a little bit of meat? A little bit of meat? Yes, this is Dr. Wolek. <laughs> Dr. Dan Wolek. <laughs> Brenda, could you, could you, Brenda, could you please try and keep him down? <laughs> yes, how was she? Well, Dan, while Dan's on the telephone. Really? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, please call me at home if I'm needed, if it's necessary. Thank you. Here you go. Here you go. 
Right, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, Ethan. It's okay. It's okay, Stephen. It's okay. Maybe I should take Stephen and I into the bedroom. No, you know what? Why don't you just take the night off, huh? Brenda, why why are you sending Nellie home? She hardly even had her dinner. Oh no, that's okay, Doctor Wolick. I I mean, it was great, but uh, I could really get into a movie and a burger, a late burger, I mean. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Green. Good night, Stephen. I'll see you later. Right here, give me, give me the bunny. Give me the bunny. Here, Stephen. Oh, a little bunny, baby. A little bunny, baby. So why'd you get rid of her so fast? Well, why do you think I got rid of her so fast? Come here. Relax, honey. Well, you just need some quality time, is that it? Yeah, and a little quantity. Quality. I forgot, I'm sorry. You can't forget stuff like that, really, you can't. Let me take it. I'm going to take him into the bedroom and get him calm down. Okay. Let's see, let's have a look at that, huh? Is she okay? Okay. Uh, well, no, honestly, I've never even had the pleasure of meeting the lovely lady. You could have fooled me. Well, she had choked on an hors d'oeuvre, so I just thought I'd try that old Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> Work, too. See? Don't you do that from the back? Well, back, front, uh, the point is that she's okay now, huh? <laughs> That's right. Bring the lady in a glass of water, please. Water. Didn't you say you had something to do before dinner? Why don't you do it right now? I would rather not. I think you could clear a lot up if you did it right really, now. Really, I Your water, fine. madam. No, thank you, sir. Tina, I insist. No, uh, let me do no, the honor. No, I'm... Oh. <laughs> This is impossible. You and I were made for the impossible. That's what I told you the night we made love in that field. Just before we we, we found that, that inn, the sin, the sin right here. How do you know about all this? My father Tony couldn't tell me, right? And only two people, two people were in that field. And when we checked into this inn, when Howard and Rosemary brought us to this room, now only two people were left in this room, okay? Stop After it. they left us. Stop it. You wore that, that beautiful old gown. And then, then, then we took a bath together. Rose petals in the water and candles all around us. And we created this, this, this private world. I don't want to hear anymore. I don't want to hear anymore. And then I touched you. I found this spot in the small of your back and I touched you. And then you quivered. Your whole body quivered. And then you said it was your Achilles heel. <laughs> As if it were a weakness. It was. It still is. No, no, no. It's, it's your passion. It's what makes you. It's what makes you different from everyone. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> drying each other off with these big fluffy towels and then we let the towels drop to the floor and then we found a beautiful way, a much better way to make each other feel warm. And then we were like kids, kids in, in a playground. And remember that bed, that old bed? We used it as a playground. And then, and then I, I sat you on this lap, on my lap in this chair. I asked you to marry me. And all your fears and your doubts vanished. And you just said yes to me. You said yes to me. And yes to all that we could have together. Yes. And remember, we made all these plans and dreams for us and for Al. And we're going to make two, no, three, three more kids we're going to make together. And we needed a, a farmhouse to put all yeah, of this in? Yes. One of those wonderful old stone houses you find here in Pennsylvania. 
in the countryside with a big live oak tree in the front yard and a grove of apple trees in the backyard. And a pond to yes. go swimming in the summertime and then to go yes. skating in the... Yes, don't stop, don't stop. Please, don't stop. Things are tense around here, but you don't have to tiptoe around me when it comes to Stephen. I love him. And I love you. We're gonna get through this, the three of us. Four of us. You forgot Nellie. Well, Nellie has got the rest of the night off. And Stephen is asleep. Now, what does that bring to mind? Oh, quiet. No. 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 Um. No. Think harder. Reading. No. Um, finishing that nice dinner uh, by candlelight look, with look, that great bottle Brenna, of wine that you have in look, there. Look, you, you, uh, those are great. All great thoughts, but you're missing the basic concept here. We are alone. Now, we got to use this opportunity in a much more romantic way. Are you following what I'm saying? Do you think we have time? How long is that movie? we got all the time. Now what are you doing? I'm gonna hit this lights. I'm gonna light the candles. Nice. You got it there? No. Gonna take you a little longer? You're never very good at that. <laughs> Like they don't want to lie. Yeah, they do. Yeah. There's something missing here. You're gonna have to worry about it. I think that's safe with me. Come here. I think it's that body of yours. What kind of gentleman are you, huh? Very gentle gentleman. As you're about to find out. Easy, boys. Easy, easy, easy. Somebody just dropped a tray. Put him away. Put him away. Sorry about that, White. It's just a reflex reaction. Everybody's a little bit nervous with the conference about to begin. I hope you don't take it personally, huh? No, no. If I was going to take something like that personally, I'd be in a different kind of business, wouldn't I? <laughs> no wonder they say nothing gets to Whitey Whitehead. Yeah, I wish everybody here felt the same way. I don't get it, Johnny. I just don't get why all your people are so nervous. I thought we were having ourselves a friendly summit meeting, aren't we? Yeah, that's all it is, Johnny, right? Um... Tina, would you excuse Whitey and me for a moment, please? Excuse me. Look, I don't know how you do it down your way, but we don't discuss business in front of the ladies. We'll take care of everything when the conference begins behind oh. closed doors. It's not good enough, Johnny. See, I don't like surprises. You have a hidden agenda here or something? How come your people are so jumpy? It's, it has to do with the drug shipment that's arriving soon in Landview. Landview? Why? What, what, is there a problem that Carlo can't handle or something? We're meeting to make sure there aren't any problems. I thought you understood that. Yeah, of course. Of course, sure. I understand that. I just wonder if, if Carlo's worried about something, I'd like to know about it. You know, we've all got a lot at stake here, Johnny. So I see. I think we ought to all cooperate. Since you're Carlo's uh, top gun... No, 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 I... no. Greg is his top gun. I'm just his lawyer. Dinner is ready, sir. Oh, thank you. Where's Marco? Mr. Dane is nowhere to be found, sir. Should I send someone to look for him? No, no, I'll, I'll take care of it, Arthur. Strange, he should have been back from the dock by now. Yeah, well, I still feel like that walk, so I guess I'll just uh, go No, 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 a man of your stature doesn't run errands. I'll send one of the men down to find Marco and uh, 
see if that mystery boat went away. Yeah, but Johnny, if something hey, happened... Hey, you... now who's nervous? <laughs> Relax, Whitey. It's a good thing I checked those place cards. Someone seated us at opposite ends of the table. But I fixed that. Oh, gee, that's swell, Charlotte. <laughs> Shall we? Tina, if you'd allow me. Whitey, Mr. Whitehead. Yeah, what? What is it, Marco? Your entourage has arrived. My entourage? Well, Whitey Whitehead. <laughs> Sarah? Look like you are surprised to see me come here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me, honey. But you're a little late and uninvited. A very bad combination. Hi. I don't believe I have had the pleasure of making your acquaintance. Now, have I? But if you don't keep your hands off my husband, I'm going to have to cut your heart out and feed it to my pet piranha. Honey, this is uh, a peace conference. We can't be having any cat fights. No, but some things aren't worth fighting for, uh, honey. God, Marco, this is one heck of a surprise, but I want you to take my wife back and put her in the boat right now, well, send her back. I wish I could, sir. That boat's gone bye-bye, baby. Besides, you make your little Sarah Bear so sad not to be with her whitey kins. It's a good thing I haven't had my dinner yet. Especially when there are so many sharks in the proverbial sea. Now, honey, aren't you going to introduce me to all your new friends here? Yes, sure. by all means, Whitey. <coughs> introduce sure. us. Sure, sure. Uh, honey, I would like you to meet Johnny D. This is my wife, Sarah. Sweetheart, this is Charlotte. This is Charlotte Hesse. Oh, my. My, my, my. Deliver me, I cannot tell you what a pleasure it is to meet the both of you. The good Hesser name means a lot where we come from, and as for your daddy, I'm very sorry. I guess all we can do is just pull together and pray that he will be sprung from that prison. Yes, we all hope he will. May I see your brochure? My brochure? Mm-hmm. Security measure. You don't have one, do you? Well, we did say it was one per family, didn't we? <laughs> No brochure, no admittance. That was the deal. But, but... However, given my great respect for you, Whitey, I'm willing to make an exception. No, no, absolutely not. I don't want any favors done for me. I want you to send my wife back to the mainland. Now, Whitey, right now, with, honey... We're not going to talk about it, sweetheart. I want you on that boat and back to the mainland tonight. Now, if you just provide me with a boat, up, send my Whitey, wife back. Lighten up, Whitey, if your wife wants to stay, she's welcome. I mean, one more guest won't get in the way. I disagree. Charlotte, honey, we have a little something down in Texas we call hospitality. You might want to try a little bit of it. How about right now? Why don't we go outside? You could start to teach me, and whichever one is left standing can come back in and join Whitey for dinner. I'm ready when I do. Excuse me, Excuse me ladies, I really I... need to uh, take this time to introduce the rest of Mr. Whitehead's entourage to Mr. D. There are more? Oh, it's just my good friend, Midge, that's all. I just think, can't seem to go anywhere without her lately. <laughs> Neither can I, apparently. <laughs> She's uh, kind of uh, an old girlfriend of mine. Dane, are you trying to tell me that you invited your girlfriend here without clearing it with me? Oh, now, really? come on, There's JT. No JT, just simmer on down, all right? It was my idea. I just did it for Marco here. I thought it would be a nice little surprise for him. That's all. Nobody mind my friend Midge. She's quiet as a mouse, shy as can be. Midge, honey, come on in now. Come on in and meet our new friends. Don't worry about me. Excuse me. Oh, Sarah, this is just grand. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. Excuse me. I think you've lost your prescription somewhere. No, I can see just fine, mighty mouse. Oh, excuse me. All I have to do is. Went a little, and there you are, my handsome friend. Now, yeah. honey, honey, come on over here with me, will you? I want you to meet my good friend J.D. here. That's Johnny D. to you, all right? There you go. Oh, I am so pleased to meet you. Yeah. Hello. Um, I had this feeling you always knew. Ever since I came back into your life, somehow you, you knew. 
I, I don't really know. How, how do I really know? I don't really know. I, I, uh, there was something about you. I, I know there was. Just go ahead. Tell me. Tell me. When I first saw you at Max's place, I was attracted to you. I didn't know why. Oh, the more I got to know you, the more I found myself wanting to respond to you, to give in to you the way I used to give in to... Go ahead. Go ahead, say it. Max, go ahead. No, I can't. I can't. I have tried so hard to erase that name from my memory. You don't understand. That's why I kept pushing you away. I kept... I kept being afraid that I was turning to Matt, uh, to you, to... Ah! Oh, no, just say it. Ah, just, just say it. Say it. I can't. You'll get used to it. You'll get used to it, I promise. No, no I'm not no. going to get used to this. Hold on, hold on. Just hold on to me. Just hold on, hold on. But just think, just think what's in store for us when we go back home to Landview. Home? Yeah. Home? Yes. To our home. To our home. Or, or you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe we should, should stay the night, okay? And, and do everything that we wanted to do here before, okay? And then in the morning, in the morning we'll drive back to Landview and tell everyone. Uh, yeah. Except. Except Tony and Andy. What? They already know. I'm sorry. Hey. I'm sorry. They know. Yes, yeah, they know. Uh, oh, wait a minute. You've told all this to uh, Father Tony and Andy, and you haven't told me. No, I couldn't. I, I, I've already explained all this. I, I had to confide so, uh, someone, so I, I, I told Tony in confession. But, and he, he couldn't tell anybody because it was under the seal of the confessional. He hated it, but that's the way it was. Your sister, was she in the confessional there, too? No, no, no. It's just that I wanted to tell you, but I don't know. She was in a bad way, and I, it just sort of came out. She was, was she? I've... I was in a bloody bad way, too. What do you think I was going through? I've already explained. I don't want to hear your explanations. God! God! You leave me hanging. You bring me back to this room while you unburden your own mind with the priest and your sister in her hour of need. Okay. Great. Okay. Now, I know Great. it's hard for you to understand and to forgive me. I'll but... forgive you? God! God! I'll never forgive you! God, no! Now, wait a minute! No! Hear me out! Sorry, we couldn't do more. Oh, please, Rosemary, you and Howard have done your best to convince Gabrielle to stay. She'll never forgive me for confiding in Father Tony and Andy and keeping her in the dark. You just pulled the rug right out from under her. You can't blame her for wanting to find some solid ground. Now you can stay here and feel sorry for yourself. Or you can go after her. You've had one miracle. Who's to say lightning can't strike again? <laughs> yeah, lightning. Yeah, that's more my speed. Another miracle, huh, Rosemary? Well, I think I'm fresh out. Honey, you need to get your prescriptions checked. All of them, everything. Oh, Guys, this is Mr. Right. D over here, oh, Mr. D. Right. This is my little honey bunch, Midgey. <laughs> oh, it That's is an name, honor, Mr. D. Now, but is that D with one E or two? Two. Oh, as in Sandra. Sandra D. Cross-reference with, don't tell me, don't tell me, Tommy, Sam, and Troy Donahue. Yeah, and others. Sweetheart, we're not in the library right now. Perhaps she would feel better if she were a She won't get in the way. Furniture might. Give her a book. She'll be happy as a toaster oven. Oh, yeah, 
Oh, almighty, stop. Books, well, I, I have this sort of passion for them, you know. Yeah, I live them, I breathe them, books. <laughs> so does Johnny. He juggles them. Oh. Marco, I'm curious about Mr. Whitehead's entourage. There aren't any more surprises, are there? Uh, of course not. There's just one nice couple, though, that, that, that is yet to arrive. But they're always happy. They're like lovers. You know, they just got married. They got married today, as a matter of fact. They're happy right now. They'll be happy for another 15 minutes or so, you know? Hey, the lovebirds, lovebirds are right here. Just. I told you, sweetheart, that I'd take you to the top. Yes. And now that we're there, I have this incredible urge to push you right over the edge. <laughs> what a kidder. But that's why I love her so much. Uh, let me introduce you to uh, Mr. D. This is Mr. Whitehead's personal assistant, Mr. Lucky. He's also known as the Enforcer. How you do, Johnny D? Lucky's my name and fear's my game. Oh. Well, not my fear. Other people's. <laughs> and his wife is his spring. Hello. So how you doing, boss? Do me a favor, will you, Mr. Lucky? Sure, you name it. Just shut the hell up. You got it. Well, we're all here. It's like one big happy family. Then that's all. Well, yeah, well, for all intents and purposes, I mean, there is a lawyer, an unnecessary appendage, though they are, by, by, but he never travels without his lawyer, do you, Mr. Whitehead? <laughs> you tell me. No, you just don't. Mr. Bruno, uh, Mr. Russo! Ha! <laughs> is right here. Mr. Russo, come on in, please. Mr. Whitehead, I believe we've got ourselves a case. No limos were provided to bring us here. And that means, sir, that that is a breach of contract. <clears throat> You're just so tired, you can't sleep. Oh, honey. Dan, I'm sorry. Oh, well, Brenda, it's, it's okay. Steven, shh. He's just too It's okay, it's all right. It's okay, Brenda. Once he gets used to his new surroundings, he'll be his old self again. Yeah. He's just really off balance, you know, and what he needs right now after what's happened in the past three months is just some... A little routine and an unfamiliar place. Right? I understand. Right? I, I don't want to put him through any more stress. If I can't handle it, I'm sure that he can. Well, you know what's best for him, right? Shh, 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 shh. Stephen, it's okay. I know, I know, I know. You're talking about a house. You're talking about Grandview, where he has familiar faces, familiar surroundings. Shh, you want me to take him from him? It's okay, Stephen. It's all right. Not my apartment. That's what you're saying. Is well, that what you're saying? yeah. I mean, it's the truth. But Grandview, Brenda, think about it. Think, but it, it. Michael's house. We're talking about here. That's what we're talking about. And we've been through this, Brenda. Yeah, but it's just temporary. Until we can do some house hunting and, and find a place of our own. And I mean, as soon as we find our house, I am selling Grandview just like that. Yeah, Come here, sweetheart. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You do that for me? I would do that for us, Dan. I want to start over, and I want us to have a home, you know? I know, but first we're going to have to deal with the fact that we can't live here. It's too cold. Okay. Steven, Steven, it's okay. 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 All right. Okay. So we'll, we'll move into Grandview tomorrow. Okay. Oh, thank you. Which, remember, it's temporary. Yeah, it's temporary, right. just until we find a house of our own. Okay. Uh, Let me put him to bed, okay. and I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Come on, honey. Honey, uh, Say goodnight. Uh, Good night. Go, 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 go to bed. Go, go to bed. Gabrielle Medina hasn't come in. Okay, just tell that Max has uh, called. Right. And tell her I, uh, the message is I haven't given up, okay? Yeah, Rosemary, thanks. Tell the cab driver. I'll be right down, okay? Johnny, allow me to present my overeager uh, consigliere, uh, Johnny D, Charlotte Hesser. This is Cordero Russo. Ms. Hesser. Charmed, ma'am. 
Mr. D. I've heard that name kicked around one or two courtrooms in my time. Well, I wish I could say the same about you, Mr. Russo. I thought I knew all the lawyers that uh, specialized in our area of law. Well, there is a reason for that. Yes, there is a very good reason for that. There sure is. You see, uh, Mr. Russo used to be my private physician, but uh, with all the complications, problems that arise from, you know, medical, uh, bureaucratic red tape, he went to law school and still trust him with my life. So an MD as well as a law degree. Impressive. I look yeah. forward to discussing some judicial issues with you, Mr. Russo. Shop talk. Well, sir, I believe it's you who told me that this is a friendly gathering, a dinner party. Oh, it is, but uh, I'm sure we can find time to discuss the RICO Act and its constitutional ramifications. Absolutely, sir. In fact, I look forward to that discussion. Dinner. Somebody mentioned dinner. <laughs> it was uh, ready ages ago. Uh, I thought I heard my mom calling me. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Really, I am sorry. All right, honey. Oh. Well, Wiley Lamb, I think it is time for us to join the others. But you took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, sweetheart, why don't you say that we join them for dinner? I'll feed you myself. Only if I get to feed you, too, to the fish. Uh, yeah, I love you, too. Tina? Oh, there you are. Why are you hiding? I'm not. I just thought maybe you might want to greet your guests. Well, I want you to meet them, too. But only if you promise to sit right beside me, hmm? uh, Johnny, we have a little difficulty between the Larkins and the Hansons over a seating arrangement of some sort. I can't handle it myself. <sighs> I'm, I'm sorry, Tina. I'll be right back. Johnny, uh... Yeah, so will I. I'm hardly sorry. Hey, Court, before you say one word to me, Nice and quiet now, Tina. I want to know exactly what the hell you're doing here. Stay tuned for General Hospital next. <laughs>